I'm Tony. So today we're gonna to take a look at our home solar setup. Now, first off a disclaimer, you need to check your local electrical code. Don't do things the way we do it. We're just showing you what we're doing. A lot of the stuff we're doing now is temporary and gonna be upgraded, but this is how we're doing it right now. So in front of you, you have an array of six GCI 285 watt panels coming in at a total of 1,710 watts. Now, obviously you won't ever get that much under even under perfect circumstances. Now, these are all connected in sets of two, wired in parallel, down to a thousand watt grid tie each. So they are well below the thousand watt rating on those grid ties. Those grid ties do have anti-islanding technology, which means they shut off if the power goes off. All right, so to put it real simply, this is not an off-grid system. This is a grid tied system that does not pay back from the electric company. There is no return financially if you are producing more power than what you're using. Now, you will see that it's on a mount that is not adjustable. This is basically to serve a dual purpose. We use it to basically be a back porch roof to extend the life of the deck under it and also to make it nicer for our dogs when they go out the dog door out into the backyard to go potty in the winter. But in the future, if we ever want to turn this property into something else, say a rental, I can take these panels down, cover that with metal roofing, and it'll serve the same purpose. So let's go take a look at the other array on the front porch that we use for our late hour days power. Okay guys, this is our front porch second array. It is two GCI 285 watt panels. They run down to a grid tie that's set up in our outdoor wood burning building. Generally speaking, these guys are only for late day power. They basically send, you know, a potential of 570 watts down into a thousand watt grid tie in our wood burning building. And we did a review on that grid tie that's been out in the worst of conditions after 18 months and it's still running just like new on our channel if you wanna go check that out. But also, if you're interested in how we got to this point, a lot of our solar videos are on our other channel before we started this one, so I'll put a link to that playlist in the description box of this video. So you guys can go check it out and see kind of our evolution of how we got here. So let's uh, step off this roof. I know it's kind of dim right now. I'm up here early in the morning trying to beat the heat because it gets hot up here once it starts pumping. We'll go down in, check out the uh, grid ties, and then I'll show you some upcoming projects that we're getting ready to do. All right, guys, you'll have to excuse the noise. The grid ties are running here and they can be a little loud. Now in the future, all this will be gone and everything will be mounted outside with a Sunny Boy grid tie. They will also have the 1500 watt exterior plug that way if there's a power outage, you can still draw power directly off your panels. But currently we're working on paying the property off here so Probably about the time we pay the property off, I'll be ready to buy that Sunny Boy and convert all these over. But for now, this system works extremely well. These three grid ties here generally barely get hot to the touch unless it is an amazing dead of summer hot day. They do run their fans a lot. That's how they stay cool. And being that this is inside the house, at times that can get irritating. But once you get used to it, it really doesn't bother me personally. Now... One thing to say about these Chinese 
grid ties inverters. They're great and they protect everything, including the linemen with their anti islandy technology. But I can tell you now, just like a TV, just like any electronics, if you get a lightning strike, they're gonna pop. We have lost one out of the four to a huge surge. We believe it was a lightning strike. There was a pole and either the transformer blew up or lightning struck it, but it was down the road from us on fire. Just to give you an idea of the scale of how bad it was. A lot of neighbors lost electronics. We lost one of our grid ties. So, and the other benefit is these are not heavily transformed. These are run pretty much through MOSFETs. So anyone who knows anything about like old car amplifiers, things like that. When things go bad with MOSFETs, they generally just go pop and a little bit of smoke comes out and they're done. So that's kind of the system and principle these are built on, which makes them rather safe for the obvious reasons. So let's go check out some of the other projects we've got upcoming on this channel. All right, guys, sorry about the cruddy light lighting in here. So what we have here is two more of the GCI 285 watt panels. These are in toss up mode. I don't know if we're going to be adding this to these to our off grid system or if they're going to be utilized in another project form like uh, solar hot water heating um, or a off grid cabin down the woods. We're not sure yet. So go over here. Down on the end there, you've got a 180 watt panel, was bought from a startup manufacturer, got to me and was dead on arrival. So we will be cracking into that and seeing if we can repair it at some point. Here, we have five 235 watt Trina solar panels. See if we can get that in there. Yep. These are going to be our panels for our off-grid system. Now, the only thing holding us up from getting this up is setting up the racking, which is going to be adjustable, obviously, and also the batteries. As I said earlier in the video, we're trying to pay the property off, so we just basically haven't bought the batteries to do it yet. We already have our MPPT controller, we already have a Xantrex uh, Pro Watt inverter. You know, we're really basically there. It's buying the batteries and building the racking, which isn't any big deal. So that will be coming really soon. Now, we actually have two of these, only one's in here. This is a treadmill motor. Okay. So, essentially, this is going to be part of something that is not going to be the most efficient way to make power, but for us, we do an outdoors channel as well, which I'll link in the description as well, where we do a lot of hiking, backpacking, get outdoor stuff, and we need to keep our legs strengthened up all winter long. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect this to a mountain bike inside that'll be up on a pedestal. That way when we're training on it to keep our legs built up, this will be producing a small amount of power and be sending it to our off grid system throughout the winter. Because obviously with snow and ice and stuff here in Ohio, the panels, even though we'll try to keep them clean, are gonna get days where they don't get much power or the overcast sky. This is just an extra way we have, you know, we go in there, we turn on a, a YouTube video or something on a tablet and get on the bike and just go for about a half an hour each. And it just puts a little bit of energy into our batteries. So we're basically putting some energy in our batteries to work out, you know what I mean? It's just a little extra benefit. We do have another one of these. It's a little smaller. We're going to be working with that on a wind experiment 
and start messing with that some. Now we do have a setup for an oil heater run directly off solar panels. It is a water heating element which is also rated for oil inside of the side of an oil heater. So we did some experimenting with that on our other channel. We'll be doing more on it this winter with this channel. So that's a basic overview of what we've got going on. Definitely subscribe if you want to stay up to date with what we're doing, how everything's progressing, and how we're improving everything. Obviously, the system's not at optimum right now. We need to make a lot of changes. But just like anything, when you're trying to be frugal and you're trying to be homesteading in a way that's financially feasible, you do things in increments and you think them through before you make these decisions. You just don't go into debt. So I'm Tony and we'll see you in the next one.